Are you thirsty? Yeah. Okay, from Cayuga. And you think that the shooter should have been a better shot? Is that what you posted on Facebook? I am at work. You think that the uh, shooter should have been a shooter, huh? I am at work. Yeah, I think that's pretty messed up. Pretty anti-American, if you ask me. As a veteran, I'm disgusted. What have you provided to this country? Huh? I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. You are ridiculous. And I'm making you famous. You just watched a video of a Trump supporter harassing what I'm assuming is a minimum wage worker at a Home Depot because she made an edgy post on Facebook about Donald Trump. Now, that video actually got on the radar of Chaya Rychik of Libs of TikTok, who then shared it to her 3 million plus followers while tagging Home Depot, that woman's employer. She then followed up with a screenshot of the comment that the woman made about the 20 year old who tried to assassinate Trump, which read, too bad they weren't a better shooter. Home Depot then saw that post after it went viral and they responded by confirming that she had indeed been terminated because of that Facebook comment. But that woman is not alone because Chaya Rychik also pointed out a comment from a Pittsburgh firefighter who shared a similar comment on Facebook, writing, too bad it didn't hit him square. And even though he wasn't fired, he did end up resigning from his position as a firefighter after making a post about how his entire life had basically been ruined and he feels unsafe and he was inundated by threats. Now there's more. Rychik also put a restaurant work her on blast for joking about the Trump assassination attempt, along with multiple teachers who made similar jokes. Now, put aside for a moment whether or not you think their comments were appropriate and ask yourself this question. Is it justifiable to fire someone and subject them to an onslaught of harassment if they joke about someone dying or they say that they want someone to die? Should that disqualify someone from working at a Home Depot or being a firefighter or a teacher? Now, if the answer is yes, then ask yourself why it wouldn't disqualify someone from being president. Now, I say this because Trump, the victim of that assassination attempt, made similar comments to those very same people that Chaya Rychik is now trying to get fired. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. If she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. But yeah, so you may be thinking there really doesn't seem to be a difference between the comments that Trump made and the comments that those people made on Facebook. You know, but there actually is a pretty significant difference. The difference is that the people who joked about the Trump assassination attempt are random nobodies. And Donald Trump is not a random nobody. He is the former president and could very well be the next president of the United States. What he says carries weight. What they say does not carry weight. Nobody's going to do political violence because Darcy from Home Depot inspired them to. But people will, on the other hand, do violence if Trump incites it. In fact, it's already happened multiple times. So it feels absurd to hold regular ass people to a higher standard than the president of the United States. If you can get fired from a Home Depot for saying that, then Trump shouldn't be able to be president for saying what he said. Now, having said that, though, it's important to be nuanced. If there's an actual threat of violence behind those jokes that they're making, that's an entirely different story. But that's not the case with these people. And I can't believe that I have to say this, but we're allowed to joke about people dying or nearly dying. You are allowed to say that you hope someone dies. That is protected speech under the First Amendment, even if you think it's grotesque. And we should all be very happy that that is protected speech, because if it weren't, we'd all be thrown in jail. I've lost count of how many people in the YouTube comment section have told me that they would love to see Hamas throw me off of a building because I'm gay and I defend Palestinians. Now, I think that that is a really fucked up thing to say, but I don't think that the person making that comment should lose their livelihood for saying it. Now, if you watch The Leftist Mafia, I've made endless jokes about Henry Kissinger dying because I felt like those jokes were justified since he is literally a mass murderer. So 
everybody once in a while memes a little bit too close to the sun. But punishing normal working class people, I'm sorry, that is just downright detestable to me. And it's especially gross to see Chaya Raichik of all people play hall monitor after she's made a career for herself ruthlessly defaming and slandering LGBTQ plus people. But ever since we've entered the Trump era, violent rhetoric has increased in large part thanks to Donald Trump. He's the one who normalized it. And what's become increasingly clear is that right-wingers, they're really comfortable whenever a conservative public figure espouses violent rhetoric, but they won't tolerate violent rhetoric if it comes from a liberal public figure. For example, Kathy Griffin lost everything because she posed for this picture with a severed Trump head. Now, I cannot stand Kathy Griffin, but how is it okay for Trump to raise the specter of Hillary Clinton getting assassinated, but that picture somehow crosses a line? Why does one cross the line, but the other doesn't? Why is it incitement of political violence when Biden calls Trump a threat to democracy, but it's not incitement when Trump quotes Hitler and says that immigrants are poisoning the blood of this country? Is that not an incitement against every single immigrant in this country? Either all of it's okay or none of it's okay. But one thing that's become increasingly evident is that there's this double standard that exists when it comes to violent rhetoric. Conservative celebrities like Kid Rock can shoot up cases of Bud Light in response to their sponsorship of a trans influencer, but if a liberal celebrity happens to make an edgy joke, well, that might be it for them. For example, at a recent Tenacious D concert in Australia, Jack Black brought out a birthday cake for his longtime friend and bandmate, Kyle Gass. Now, after he sang him happy birthday, he told him to make a wish. Now, watch what he wished for. Make a wish, Canada. Don't miss Trump next time. <laughs> So he made a joke and like Kathy Griffin, immediately lost everything. On Instagram, Jack Black writes, I was blindsided by what was said at the show on Sunday. I would never condone hate speech or encourage political violence in any form. After much reflection, I no longer feel it is appropriate to continue the Tenacious D tour and all future creative plans are on hold. Now, listen, I understand him trying to play it safe and apologizing to be responsible. I appreciate that because he is a public figure and he obviously doesn't want people to think that he's endorsing political violence but it was a joke and he's basically canceling his friend that he's had for decades all because of a joke you can say look it was a terrible joke and it something that i don't agree with i unequivocally condemn it we apologize for it and then move on but that wasn't sufficient apparently kyle gas himself has uh, come out and apologized profusely and said it was stupid and wish he didn't say that but just stop for a moment and ask yourself if a conservative celebrity or a politician joked about a Democratic president, for example, being assassinated, would you expect them to have as much scrutiny or even hold themselves to as high of a standard as Jack Black is holding his own friend to? I don't think anybody does. For example, Republican Congressman Joe Walsh blamed Obama for the shooting of police officers in Dallas and tweeted, this is now war. Watch out, Obama. Watch out, Black Lives Matter punks. Real America is coming after you. And all he had to do was delete the tweet, and that was it. I don't even know if he apologized, actually. Now, he's brought on TV as a commentator. He's one of the reasonable Republicans since he's anti-Trump. Now, I'm not saying that Kyle Gass or a liberal celebrity like Kathy Griffin can't have their careers rehabilitated, but there's this baked in expectation, it seems, that Republicans are allowed to use violent rhetoric all the time and nobody bats an eye and that's fine, we're supposed to accept it, but liberals can't do that. And I'm not saying that anyone should be using political rhetoric that's violent, I'm just saying there's a very clear double standard that's being exposed here. Now, another person who was canceled over this is streamer Destiny. He was just banned from Kick because of comments that he made about the Trump assassination attempt. Now, people have pointed out that Kick is a platform that has not banned literal pedophiles. So that's a little bit sus if you ask me. But Destiny went on Pierce Morgan to defend himself and debate Dave Rubin about violent rhetoric. And here's how that went down. Your position seems to be that, that anyone from Donald Trump to his supporters who represents their thinking, their ideology, their political views, that if they are killed by an assassin at a, at a rally, then they deserve what's coming to them. And in your words, fuck them. I mean, do you not understand that to most decent Americans and to decent people around the world, 
that is incredibly offensive and makes you look like a two-faced hypocrite, somebody who wants the other First side all, to behave not, to a certain no, level I don't, of decency, I don't, I don't want but is himself the, incapable no. of displaying it. I'm not, the conservatives don't have it in them to have that level of decency. So why don't, don't you even, rise to a higher bar? That. Why don't you not, yourself cause, show cause them? It, show them the promised land destiny. Work. Show them the way the they should be behaving. Have been doing it for eight years. There's nothing to be gained there. So right. instead, we'll just have a laugh instead. The the when you're asking for this about type people of decency, you're saying when you yeah, like they did for Pelosi's husband, like they did he for BLM die. people, like they did for the endless die. for the endless. He didn't die, but he got the crap beat out of him with a hammer, and they made jokes about his yeah, and gay by the way, lover. The jokes okay? were just the jokes were disgusting. Why can't you say? The, the same thing about the people making mockery of Trump. Why do you join the mob? Why do it's you- It's not just, because it's not just the jokes. It's the underlying substantive analysis as well. It's the lack of responsibility for um, for January 6th. It's the lack of responsibility for the um, for the, um, for the the Gretchen plot. Uh, it's the uh, lack of accountability but, for but, but uh, all the comments yardstick. made about BLM protesters, right, by uh, your George Floyd, for, by your uh, for, Clinton, for all of these. But yeah. By your yardstick, what the Republicans should do in response is simply say, fuck all of them. Fuck they them all, who cares? Are. Pierce, that's what you're not understanding. Pierce, listen to me. This is what you're not understanding. You keep you keep bringing this up to me. Like, well, Destiny, if you act like this, aren't conservatives just going to do... Back your words and then you say you. a thing, but they, they've done this for eight years. Now, I don't think that Destiny came off looking very good here. And part of the reason why there was so much backlash to him online was because he didn't just joke about the Trump assassination attempt, even though if he limited it to just that, there would still be a lot of backlash. But he also joked about the firefighter who was murdered at the event. So this was a regular person, and while I disagree strongly with that person's political views, I do find it tragic that he was murdered. Of course, that's terrible and reprehensible. With that being said, Destiny found an old tweet of that guy about Gaza where he said they'll get over it. The Japanese did. And Destiny, I'm assuming, was trying to prove the point that this political movement that he's a part of has normalized violent rhetoric and political violence. Now, I think that you can make that same exact point without celebrating the death of this normal person. Having said that, though, the overall point that Destiny is making about this double standard between liberals and conservatives is undeniably true. For example, watch this next clip where Dave Rubin reacts to comments that Destiny makes. Do you condemn the shooter shooting Donald Trump? No. Not, wow. not here, not on this program, not in front of these wow. people. Absolutely you do not, not condemn a deranged shooter these people? Shooting you are, Donald Trump. You are truly Trump. just a child. This is not. Uh, actually, this is it's not. not a no, you know here. what, We're Charlie? We're just trying to be decent human You know beings. what, Charlie? It's not actually the behavior of a child. It's it's a, it's the behavior of somebody who's completely lost his moral compass. Dave Rubin, respond to what you've just heard from Destiny. I mean, it's actually one of the most disgusting things that I've ever heard in my life. My entire staff in my studio right now all gasped at that. When I, I happened to be at Target, the store Target, we were checking out when I saw it on Twitter, and my heart actually sank. And I know that that is the feeling of probably 200 plus, if not 300 plus million Americans, even many of whom would vote against Trump and do not like Trump and all of those other things. The idea that you can't show sympathy or empathy for that is is so profoundly sad. OK, so Dave Rubin is so shocked by the lack of empathy expressed by destiny, except, hey, Dave, remember when you said this? He's in first grade. Imagine if I found out that actually for three months, there was a teacher talking to him about gender or sexuality, maybe calling him Justine instead of Justin, and I didn't know about that. I might kill that person. My entire crew just gasped, Dave. There's a bunch of people behind the camera. Uh, my producer is my, uh, my cameraman. We've got a lot of people behind the scenes here. It's a very big operation. They all just gasped after you said that, Dave. You just said you would murder a teacher if they transed your first grader or something. First of all, that's not a thing that's happening. Second of all, aren't you justifying violence against teachers for supposedly grooming kids? And don't you think that's dangerous? I mean, conservatives have accused teachers of being groomers for anything, having a rainbow flag in their classrooms. Like they would accuse you of being a groomer since you have kids. So are you not justifying political violence there? Are you not raising the specter of assaulting or murdering teachers? 
but there's more. Here's Dave Rubin making a joke about the death of Aaron Bushnell, saying that he hopes AOC, Rashida Tlaib, and Ilhan Omar join him and commit suicide. Here he is saying, quote, Hamas wouldn't even rape these cows in response to a picture of Palestinian activists. And also here's Dave Rubin sharing a gif of MC Hammer after Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, was nearly bludgeoned to death by an intruder who showed up to their home to try to assassinate Nancy Pelosi. So do you see the problem here? These people are fucking hypocrites. That was the underlying point that Destiny was trying to make. So in conclusion, you know, I guess I just want to see more consistency. I know that's like, you know, not going to happen, but it'd be nice. You know, either it's all okay or none of it's okay. But I mean, spare me in the meantime with this selective outrage. Don't pretend that you're so shocked by a lack of empathy if you have none yourself. Don't pretend like you're outraged because you're decent or empathetic when you're not decent and you're not empathetic. But at a minimum, I guess I just want conservatives to at least try to hold themselves to the same standard that they're holding Darcy from Home Depot to. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.